Welcome back to MSA Phase 2 2020. I hope you guys have enjoyed everything you have learned so far in this project. In this section, we will be exploring implementation of SignalR, an open source library that adds a real-time functionality to your web application. This section will assume that you have already completed the base project of the Pixel Canvas app. So if that's not you, be sure to check out the prior section before continuing. So, why would we want to add a real-time capability to our web application? Let's take a look at our Pixel Canvas, for example. If I try to update some squares here, you can see that on the right, which is a different client, this change is not being updated in real-time. In fact, it would take about 10 seconds for this to be updated. This is because in our code, we're doing a polling making a call to a GET request every 10 seconds. This means that if you have 500 players playing at the same time, not only at least 3000 calls will be made per minute to get all to update the data to the database, but none of the players will see if the changes happens in real time. Let's take a look at an example with SignalR implemented. Here, the backend SignalR hub will immediately update all the connected client as soon as the changes happens. And this change is reflected in real time without any API call being made. In fact, we will implement the backend hub to hold the current state of the canvas and only save it to the database when all the player has left the game. So, we only need to call the API twice, once to initialize the canvas and once to save at the very end. Let's get started. So we'll first start by setting up the SignalR backend hub class. Head over to your backend ASP.NET Core web API. Navigate to manage NuGet packages for solution and head over to browse. And here we are after microsoft.aspnetcore.signalr core. Go ahead and install that into our project. Once that's complete, we're going to go ahead and add a new folder. I'm going to call this folder hubs. And this folder will contain our new signal R hub class. So add a new class, call it signal R hub dot CS. Awesome. And make sure you import Microsoft dot SPNet core dot signal R. And inherit from hub class, so basically this signal R, our signal R hub class implementation will inherit from the parent signal R hub class. So the first method we'll be implementing is the onConnectedAsync. This is an override method that will basically get executed when a new client is connected to our backend. So what that means is every time a client is connected, say a browser is connected to um, the application, this onConnected async will be executed. Let's implement something interesting here. So let's take a look at what I've done here. First of all, I retrieved the client IP from the current connection. And this line here is really interesting because client.other.sendAsync, this is basically a way for the SignalR backend to invoke a client side front end method. So at the moment, we haven't implemented this new user connected. Uh, method in our client-side code, but 
when the new user connects to our backend, every other client's new user connected function will be executed and the backend will pass the client IP address to all the clients. What this means is that once we implement the new user connected client side functions, we can actually see every time the new user connected to our session, we can see their IP address. So that would be quite interesting. And this is what we're going to implement next in our React front end application. But before we can do that, we need to head over to startup.cs and configure a few really important settings here. So first one, under configure services, we will need to add the dependency injection for our signal R. So services dot add signal R here. And that's for configure services. And let's scroll down to configure method. This configure method, we will need to um, adjust the app.use course setting so that our front end client can connect to our back end. So we're going to go ahead and allow that. Since we're doing this development locally at the moment, I'm just going to allow our front end client, which is sitting at localhost 3000 for now, to connect to our back end signal R hub. So go ahead and allow any header. allow any method and allow credential last but not least we will have to add the mapping so this mapping here will be used by um, the front end clients to communicate with our signal R back in and obviously we need to import the namespace cool so this will make more sense uh, in the next section once we try to connect to our um, back in signal hub um, so far this is looking good so we'll head over to our front end to implement our first new user connected method Head over to your front end React directory. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. And we want to head over to Latest Grid, which is where our canvas is. If you haven't already um, run npm install, so go ahead and do so. Get all the packages back. So once that's complete, go ahead and install our client-side library of SignalR. So npm install Microsoft slash SignalR. Once that's complete, we're going to import all the essential classes we need from SignalR. So go ahead and import We imported Hub Connection Builder, Lock Level, and Hub Connection. Next up, in our latest grid function component, we want to declare a new React hook. Uh, and the use state will, uh, React hook will return uh, Hub Connection will be of type hub connection. Um, so our state will be hub connection and we'll declare a method to set the states to be set hub connection. 
Next, we'll declare a new use effect to create a connection to our backend React, React Hub. So this use effects uh, will be executed when the component loads and since we want to only execute um, connection creation once, we'll add an empty array um, as a par parameter at the end and this use effects fix will only be called once. I'm going to go ahead and declare a method, a function to create a connection. So let's create let's create a connection object that will allow us to connect to our back back end signal R hub. Here we need to pass in the endpoint of our signal R hub. So since our back end is running locally on port 80, uh no port uh, 44301, we're gonna add um forward slash hub at the end. So this is where we configured our signal our hub mapping to be. So here we add some uh, logging up information. This will allow us to see more information in the Chrome developer console. And with automatic reconnect, this allows the signal our client to automatically uh, attempt to reconnect if the connection to our backend is dropped. So that's quite useful and go ahead and build this connection object. Um, once we have that ready, once we have the connection object ready, we can go ahead and try to start the connection. So connection.start and if nothing goes wrong, we will print, we'll just console log a successful status message. However, if something goes wrong, we'll catch it and log an error message. Cool. And once we have the connection going, uh, we can set our state uh, passing in connection objects so that we have this hub connection and once we have established our create hub connection function there don't forget to go ahead and create the hub connection so basically this hub connection um, and React connection should be established when we load this component. And if everything is successful, we should see console.log successfully connected to signal our hub. So why don't we go ahead and test that? I'm going to go run npm start. And we also need to run our backend. So I'm going to go ahead and start the IS Express. So our backend swagger is working correctly. Let's take a look at our front end. And let's refresh that. So there's some error there. Error establishing connection to signal our hub. Let's take a look at what's wrong. And as you guys would have probably noticed that I did have a typo there, so you just need to change that to localhost and recompile that. Now, if we refresh our front end, we should see that we get the message successfully connected to signal our hub, which we did a console log after we create uh, start our connection to the back end. So that's awesome. Now we have the signal R connection between the front end and our back end. Let's take a look at 
the function that we implemented earlier. Recall that every time a client connects to our backend, we're going to invoke a method on every other client. The method name is new user connected. So let's go ahead and implement that in our front end. And this method passed in IP address of the connection as well. Back in our latest grid component, we're going to implement new user connected event handler in our front end. Above connection.start, we're going to wire up the event handler. So connection.on and here's where you will put in your method name, new user connected. And we know that from the back end, a client IP is being passed into our front end. So we can declare the same parameter name of type string, because that IP address is a string. And here, let's just go ahead and console log a simple message that will utilize the IP address parameter that we receive from the back end. So new user join the session. And here we'll display the IP address. All right, so let's quickly recap. Adding this event handler with a function named new user connect on new user connected, um, this is going to be listening for our backend, and our backend is going to be invoking this new user connected um, client side method every time there's a new connection. So what does that look like? Let's go ahead and test that. So back in our um, front end application. I'm going to go ahead and refresh that. Um, we can see that everything is fine so far. We are success successfully connected to the Signal Hub. But now, if I open an another instance of um, our application, we can see that we get a message, new user join the session. This is because every time someone new join the session, our backend signal hub will invoke the method that we wrote earlier, which is on new user connected. Um, just need to make sure I don't have any typo in there. And we can see that this is working correctly. Um, IP address of one is because we are running this uh, development environment locally. We've made a really good progress so far with the connection between the front end and the back end. We can also see the notification every time a new user joins. So that's really awesome. As you can see, the problem is still there. We're still polling the get canvas API call every 10 seconds. This is not really real time, is it? With Signal R, we can actually hold on to the state of the canvas. So we don't really need to be polling and calling and retrieving the data from the database. What that means is we only need to call get canvas the first time the first player joins the game and we can just update the database when the last player leaves the session. So overall we only need to call to API call and everything that happens in between will be handled by Signal R in real time. So let's get started. Back in our Signal R hub backend class we're going to bring in the canvas controller so that when the first player joins, we can call get canvas and hold on to the state of the canvas as a variable, as a static variable. So in order for that, uh, in order to call get canvas, which is in the controller, uh, recall that get canvas will return a JSON um, string array containing um, our canvas 
color data value. So in order to do that, I'm going to declare a class member, canvas And I'm going to be creating a constructor for our signal R hub. So that we can instantiate our controller. But recall that in the canvas controller, in order to create this class, we need the context from application database and config. Fortunately, this was um, injected uh, by dependency injection, as we can see here. So that means it's available for us to use in Signal R class as well. So in the constructor, we can just go ahead and declare a method signature. bring in the namespace that we need. And now we can go ahead and instantiate the canvas controller class right inside signal R hub class. Uh, this is a wrong type. We want the database context. So we're going to need to bring in the right namespace. Awesome. So now we have the canvas controller, which means we can call get canvas method like so. All right. So now let's create a static class that will represent information about the current canvas. So I'm going to declare a class called current session. And current session will hold on to our to hold on to the state of our canvas as long as the session is live. So we'll have the string array uh, two-dimensional string array, uh, member called color array, and another really useful member that we could declare is um, a hash set of connection ID. So this connected ID hash set will allow us to keep track of how many connected um, instances of users. So that's, that's really good. This way we can keep track um, when the last player has left the game, then we will save our color array um, to the database. So back in our on connected async, every time there's a new connection. We're going to add the connection to our connected IDs hash set. Next up, we want to initialize the initial color array when the first player joins. So We can check here if the color array is null. It means that this is the first player that's joining to the uh, that's con making a connection to our back end. So we can go ahead and call our controller to initialize the color array. Recall that. Um, Get canvas actually uh, 
returns a JSON string. So we'll need to deserialize that back into an object of string array. Bring in the Newton solve.json and we'll serialize this to a two dimensional array. Awesome. So if the color array is empty, which means the color array has not been initialized, we're going to initialize it by calling the, the get canvas using canvas controller. Here, once we initialize the current session.color array with the canvas array, we're going to call clients.color.sendAsync and invoking color array updated client side function and passing in the color array that we have retrieved. So this client.color.sendAsync will only invoke the client side function on the client that call this method. So that's really good. We're not going to broadcast um, invocation of this method on every single connected client, but only the connecting client. But if the color array is not null, which means there's already an ongoing session, um, we can simply return the caller that's just connected to our back end by invoking the color array updated and re return whatever is the color array in the current session. So let's head back to our front end and implements color array updated event handler. So back on the front end above the connection.start we're going to add another um, event handler, connection.on. Here we implemented a uh, event handler on color array updated, which receive a two dimensional string color array from our back end and it's going to invoke set color array um, which re-renders our um, front end canvas so we no longer need to have this use effects which is basically a polling that makes a API call to our back end every 10 seconds and update the set color array so let's go ahead and remove this So we'll save this and relaunch. Fantastic. So you can see here that we no we we no longer needs to do a polling to call the get canvas API um, as our backend already handled that. Next up We'll have to add an ability for our front end to update the current session dot color array in our back end signal R hub. So in our front end, we're going to make change to this modified color method. Very similar to the previous implementation of modified color, but instead of calling an API every time a, a player updates a grid, we're going to simply use our hub connection state and invoke a method on our back end, which we will implement um, in a bit. Uh, this method on our back end is called update color array, and we are passing the modified um, 
we're passing the prop of t uh, of um, type modify props, which if we have a look is simply a position with the row and column and the color hex value. So we turn that into a JSON string and pass that to our update color array in, in the back end. Let's implement update color array here. But before we can do that, we would need to create a cell update class that resemble modified props. Under signal R hub class, we can create two new class for that. Position and cell update. So these two classes basically resemble uh, modified props, which will become really handy when we pass this JSON string to our backend. Back inside our signal R hub class, let's add a update color array method. Here we declare update color array, which will be invoked by the front end client when the user make changes to the canvas. And here we take the JSON string passed from the front end and deserialize it into a cell update object of type cell updates. Here we can easily update the current session dot color array at the correct position using the cell update position dot row and column, and we simply replace cell updates color with whatever the color um, the user has selected from the front end, and we'll go ahead and update every client with the new array color array information as well. So a quick recap. This update color array will take in a cell update JSON string from the front end. So if we take a look at the front end, now when the user modify the color, it will invoke the back end update color array and passing in the modify prop um, as a JSON string. And what it does is that we take the JSON string, we deserialize it into an object of type cell updates, which pretty much resemble the interface in our front end. And then we use the index to update the color of the color array in our current session object um, at the right position. And then after that, we call color updated array passing in color array, the latest color array, back to every single connected client. And that's how they see their grids being changed in real time. So let's try that out. Awesome. As you can see here, these two browsers um, have different connection to our backend, but they both are being updated in real time. So we know that our modify color in the front end works. Don't forget to remove the previous implementation because we no longer need to make an API call to update um, our database, database every time. Next, we'll be looking at updating our canvas at the very end when the last user left the session. We have pretty much made our Pixel Canvas game a real-time multiplayer, but one thing that we haven't done is saving the latest canvas to the database. This means that once the website is powered down, uh, once the server is powered down, we'll actually lose all the changes that happens during the session. So as we discussed earlier, what we wanted to do is we want to save the canvas back to the database only 
after the player, last player has left the game. So let's implement that. Let's head over to Canvas Controller and implement our update canvas method. Here we implemented the update canvas put method that takes a two dimensional array um, updated canvas which will come from our signal aha current session dot color array and then we retrieve the canvas from our database join joining the canvas ta table with the color data table selecting the latest canvas and for each color data we convert it we converted the color data to a list and then for each one we basically compare our updated canvas which exists on the signal r with the one in the database if the value the color value hex is different from the one or in our signal r back in then we simply replace it with the new one and once we've gone through all the color data array we save the changes to back to the database so we only want to call this after the last player has left to update the database with the latest canvas head back to signalrhub.cs we are implementing a override method called on disconnected async which is executed every time a user disconnect from the back end so when they close the browser for example and first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the connection ID from the hash set So after removing the connection ID of the user that just disconnect, we can check if the connect connected ID has set um, is equal to zero. If that's the case, it means that that player that just disconnect was actually the last player. So we're going to use the canvas control controller and invoke an update update canvas method put method that we just implemented passing in current session dot color array that way we will update our back end with the latest changes in the canvas let's go ahead and test this we can see that our very first square is a white square and this is confirmed by the color data uh, at index uh, row 0 and column 0 the hex value is is white so we're going to confirm that our implementation is working basically if I change this color then this value should not be updated in the database at all only until when I have disconnected because currently I'm the only one connecting to our backend. Once I disconnect, this should be updated. So let's go ahead and update this to black. Um, let's just do green here. So 7ED321. I updated the first square to green and disconnect. So now my update canvas uh, put method should be triggered and the database should be updated with the latest changes from the canvas. So let's go ahead and try that out. From white is now turning to green. And that concludes our tutorial on Signal R implementation. I hope you guys have enjoyed building this project and learn a few things or two, especially how to implement a real-time capability with SignalR, of course. So, 
Be sure to check out the latest news and update and other tutorials on Inside MSA GitHub. Otherwise, see you next time.